<laughs> okay, y'all, I'm just telling you right now, get ready. Because it's it's a we're about to have some mic drops. My friend Robert and I met. Now I feel like we when we met, we were like, don't we know each other? And we'd never met. And so I feel like that we've been friends our entire lives because we have, I think, similar energy. And I shared with you on a couple of our Facebook lives and team calls before. Robert is a 10-year Broadway veteran. He is a CEO, he's an entrepreneur, he's an arts educator. He what I love the most, why I wanted him to speak to you so much was he has done and is doing what all of us are doing. It's just in a different genre. He has sat at his kitchen table, had an idea and decided to create something in an online space, in a real life space, what, like what we do, to create a community like what we do, to offer products and programs, in his case, to offer young people a chance to get better in musical theater, hopefully in the JV house, to be on Broadway someday. <laughs> and what he does is what we do. It's just a different genre. He has done and is doing what we do every single day, and that is build a business. And he's done it from a different perspective, but he's done it from the ground up. He didn't get to go into an already established corporation with amazing mark. He's done all of that himself. So that perspective, I think, lends him so much experience and so much wisdom. And every time I have the fortune to be in the room when he's speaking, when Jesse's taking a class or something, the first time I experienced it, he started talking. I'm like, crap, I better be taking notes. Like, I need to be taking notes. So now I just know if I walk in the room and Robert's going to talk, I have my notebook and I'm ready to write it down. And probably something I've said is I've shared with you because he said it. And he's just one of the most authentic, inspiring humans that I know, and I'm honored to share him with you today. So Robert, I'm going to mute myself, and I'm going to let you take over and share your story and your experiences with this amazing team. Oh my goodness. First off, how are y'all doing? How is everybody today? I am like, I teach kids, so I'm very interactive. Um, so I am, I'm actually going to look at you on gallery view um, because I'm going to just need to see in the chat that you are with me um, because if not, we will be the first to be on the floor doing crunches and push-ups um, because I don't play in my classroom. So um, let me see. In the, okay, great. Okay. Hey, hey. Okay. I'm doing some hey, some hello, some what's up. Okay. Amazing. Um, first off, huge, huge thank you to my dear friend, Julie, for having me here today. I am so grateful. I am so inspired by the work that you do. And beyond the work that you do, I am most inspired by the consistency in which you do your work. Um, I believe that this time that we're all living right now is really showing us who people are. It's showing us who are the fluffy leaders. It's showing us who are the leaders that will get you through a storm. You know, I know all of us are entrepreneurs here, so we follow a lot of people's accounts. You know, we get a lot of different people's information. And I have got to say, I, it's like, it's been full frontal nudity in the online business world for the past, you know, two months. It's like, oh, you ain't what you said you are. Okay, I see. Okay, all right. Take your love and your light. That's amazing. Um, but what I want you to know is that you have a true leader in Julie, and I know that you know it. I know that you feel it. I know that you experience it. Um, and if I've learned anything over these last couple of months, it's that leaders need love too. Um, and so what I need you to do in the comments right now is give me one thing that you love and adore most about Julie. Um, put it in the comments because y'all, those early, like somebody gets up and does a live for you in a closet every morning. Okay. Morning. Okay. Her consistency. Yes. Her passion, her fire. Yes. The best heart, the brightest light, her energy. It's contagious. She believes in us always how real she is. Yes. Sia. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. Kelly, her energy, her energy. 
She never gives up on her team, her passion. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Her spirit. Oh, y'all are amazing. Um, and legit what Julie said, we met three, I believe three years ago. Um, and I do not believe that anything happens by mistake. You know, everything, it, it's all supposed to be happening. The good, the bad, the light, the dark, the ugly, the cute, it, it's all, it's all here. We're all here for it. And I knew immediately just like the other, you know, 121 of us that are on this call right now, the moment that I met her, that I was like, who are you? <laughs> Where have you been in my life? And I need more of this. Um, and what I realized is that, so just, I don't, I don't know how much backstory y'all know, but um, I'm a, I am a Broadway performer and I opened up my own arts education company. Um, and I've had the legit, and I'm not just saying this because Julie is here, but truly the honor and the privilege to be one of the mentors in her, in Jesse's life. Um, and they found our class because of a shit storm. Sorry, excuse my language. They found our class truly because the Vorises were going down to Florida to handle one of the most heartbreaking days in their family's life, right? But what came out of it was, one, a, a, a new chapter, but also like this incredible friendship that we've been able to experience over the last three years. But what I love most about Julie is she walked into that room at 7.30 a.m. herself, her true self, like there was not a guard of like, who is this person that's about to teach my child? You know, it was just like, hey, here we are. And I, I, I just can't tell you how, how blessed I am that we've had the opportunity to grow together over, um, over these past couple of years and for just showing up. And the beautiful thing, friends, is that we get the opportunity every single, not day, but every single hour, every single minute to do that for our communities and beyond our communities to do that for our families right now. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's a little easier for me to say that. I live in a, a three-bedroom apartment by myself in New York City with no children, okay? Like, life is good, okay? So I get it. I get it. I hear you. I don't have to, like, I, I was listening to Kendra, and she's like, I have mommy time and Kendra time. No, I have Robert time. It's great. It's amazing. Like, there's no one, like, screaming for my attention. Yes, I have my students, but, like, the great thing is they're online, so I can just close that computer down, which I don't because I'm obsessed with them. Um, but I want to talk to you, you know, I, I've been going back and forth, you know, with, with Julie about, Hey, you know, what would be best, you know, for me to share? Because here's the thing, we are in different industries, but the core of what we are doing it is the exact same thing. We are trying to share the goodness of our life with someone else so that they can have a better day. That's literally what it comes down to. And so what I wanna share with you for the next few minutes, and then we're gonna open it to Q&A, is it's okay to have a good day. That's it. Simply, simply put, it's okay to have a good day. And what I wanna talk about is the definition of good. I believe it to be complete, whole, and lacking nothing. Again, that is complete, whole, and lacking nothing. So do me a favor really quick. I see you writing furiously. Put it in the chat for me really quickly. Put complete, whole, and lacking nothing. Put that in the chat for me really quick as I drink some orange juice because I'm obsessed with juice. I love y'all. Amazing. Um, so here's the thing. Is anyone else out there right now on a scale of one to 10, feeling like it's hard to share goodness that's happening in your life right now. Like one being, I don't experience that all. 10, yes, it is VVV difficult in these internet streets right now to share goodness. Um, just let me, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, some seven to eights, some tens, some nines. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes. Um, I want you to know that I have struggled with that as well during this season. Um, but what I want you to know is that everything that you have done has prepared you for this moment, has gotten you to this moment, truly. And you have to be proud of that and you have to take comfort and rest and action in that. In the sense that all of us here, if you really think about it, you've been training for the coronavirus. (laughs) You've been working on an online company that although, yes, we do train people, and yes, there is in-person events, you can take your company completely digital right now. You know, like you've been training for this moment. And so I say all of that to say, it's okay to celebrate that. And it's okay to be proud of yourself for putting in some footwork, because I do believe that sweat equity will always come back to have your back real talk, okay? You go get on that Peloton, you go run around your block, you go take your shake, it's going to come back to you. (laughs) Like, it's going to come back to you. It is literally just a revolution of goodness that will come back to you. So, you know, what I want to, really, what I really want to start with is that, one, it's okay to have a good day. Two, it's okay to know that we are going to get through this. But three, It ain't about you, boo. It ain't about you. Um, You know, I tell my students all of the time that, and our parents, I say, every day that I believe that breath is put in your body, because I do believe that it is a gift. I am not speaking of Mary, Joseph, Jesus, Buddha, or Gandhi. It is just a universal truth that I believe that something greater than Robert Hartwell is putting breath inside of my body. I don't think that that gift is for me. I believe that that gift is to help other people put breath in their bodies so that we can continue to grow this world, continue to grow our communities, continue to have the expansive goodness that's within us shared out with this world. Because more than ever, I know I like LOL'd light and love earlier, but for real, for real, more than ever, we need and we crave that light. So I say all of that to say, I remember I was doing um, Cinderella on Broadway a couple of years ago, and I remember walking into the theater one day, and I don't know if any of you have ever, if you've ever seen a Broadway show, put your hand up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Amazing. All right, it looks about like 70, 80% of y'all. Um, here's the thing. I, t- you know, my parents, you know, they asked me, you know, when I first, you know, started doing Broadway 10 years ago, why are you so tired? I don't understand. You know, like, what, 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 what you know, what, why are you exhausted? And I say, okay, do you remember when you came to see opening night? Remember that show that you saw? Yeah, girl, I do that eight times a week, and I've been doing it for about 10 years, eight times a week now. Oh, boo is tired, okay? So there are days where you walk into your dream job, and you're just like, I'm tired. (laughs) Or like, I don't want to do this today. That's okay, because uh, that makes you a human being, okay? Um, Welcome to the club. I love it. I'm going to send y'all t-shirts. Um, but what I, I walked in the, into the theater that day and I remember sitting at my dressing room table and I was like, Ooh, it is going to, um, it's going to take some, it's going to take some work to get through this next three hours of my life. Um, and my dressing room buddy at the time, his name is Andy Jones. He's one of my best friends. Um, you know, he said to me, he, and it's something that I say to him, but he then threw my sermon back on me and he said, Robert, we get to do this today. And I was like, you know what, friend? You are so right. Because there are so many, literal thousands of people that auditioned for this show that didn't get it. There were 23 of us that did. There are thousands of people that would love to come to see Cinderella, but they financially can't or their health requires them to not be able to leave their homes. Um, 
And so anyway, we did the show and I remember I, you know, finishing the show that night, I thought to myself, I feel so grateful that the work that I get to do not only heals other people, but in turn, it can also heal me of myself. <laughs> right. Um, because I think so many times we get in the way of blessing other people simply because we don't want to bless ourselves. <laughs> we're afraid to let some goodness come through us because of the work that we're doing. Is this making sense? Can I get a hand? Okay, if you've ever been there, okay, amazing. So finished the show that night and um, I sat at the, you know, at the dressing room table and Andy and I, this is before I met Julie, um, we would always have a sweet treat at the end of our show, whether it be a cookie, a donut, or five. Um, and I remember we were just having a good old time. Like, I remember this night, like it was literally yesterday, it was a few years ago, and I walked out of the stage door, um, and every stage door culture is different depending on what show you're in. When I was in Hello Dolly with Bette Midler, that stage door was nuts. Everyone wanted to see Bette. When I did Cinderella, our stage door was very different in the sense that um, a lot of children came to see the show. So we would have a crazy Saturday afternoons or Wednesday afternoon stage door. But the evening, parents are like, I got to go get that babysitter on up out of here because I don't want to get charged for another hour. Um, so, you know, anyway, all of that to say, I came out of the stage door and there was this little black boy standing at the stage door and he was holding his playbill. Um, and he said to me, he was like, um, are you Robert Hartwell? And I said, I was like, oh my goodness. I said, I am. I said, what's your name? He said, my name is Kirk. I said, Kirk, it's so nice to meet you. And um, come to find out he had been following my career for like the past seven years, because that was about three years ago, but he had been following my career for about seven years since I had started on Broadway. And he's like, I had never seen another you know, young black guy from Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, move to New York City and make it on Broadway and do the thing. Um, and he's like, I just, I'm, I'm so, you know, grateful that, you know, you are taking the time to speak to me. And I, you know, talked to him for a few minutes and we took a selfie together and I walked away, you know, I got on the subway that night and I thought, you will never give up an opportunity to share what has been so graciously given to you ever again. Because I don't know about your job, but every morning that you wake up, you get the opportunity to go to it or not go to it. There was no police officer, you know, standing in front of me that morning, you know, that night walking into the, into the theater that said, you have to do this. No, it was a choice, you know, and I could have stayed home and had my understudy go on that night, you know, but I would have missed that connection of meeting Kirk. You know, I would have missed that moment. And like, what, now that I'm telling this story, I'm thinking back, like, what sacrifice that had to take for him in college to afford a Broadway ticket? What sacrifice it took for him to be the last person still standing at that stage door waiting for me? You know, like I was the last person to leave the theater that night. He could have given up hope and just gone home. You know, like, so all of that to say, somebody is waiting on you. So stop waiting on you, right? Activate that thing inside that you know is calling you because somebody needs you. And I know you're like, well, Robert, I have 50 Instagram followers. Boom, that's 50 more than somebody that has not started yet, okay? And I am here to tell you as a seven-figure business owner, you start being consistent and showing up for what you're putting a metric on as small and I promise you, it will blow the F up. You be good to your people and you will be blown away by their goodness that jumps back into your life. I'm so serious. I mean, the, even the mere fact that like, I'm here today speaking to you. Someone, Julie, actually, someone, her daughter, Jessie, saw a Facebook ad, which you're like, I don't know how to do Y'all teach yourself. You just teach yourself. Do it scared and just do it. I didn't know what I was doing, okay? I didn't know nothing about Facebook ads, okay? I was like, get, 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 get. but it worked. 
I got to meet Jesse. I got to meet Julie. We got to then begin this relationship. All of that to say, someone is waiting for you. And so I don't want you to look at your numbers right now and say, oh, but only, no, 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 no. You look in that mirror and you get to work, okay? Um, someone said, I just struggle so much because of my back injury. I get demotivated that my body will fail me no matter what I do. Um, Starcy, here's the thing, my love. There is nothing more beautiful than transparency in the year of 2020. I am here to tell you there is somebody else on your Instagram that their back is broke right now or their hip is out right now, or their neck is out right now, and you start speaking to a better day and what I hope is going to happen, and you start speaking in the positive and the affirmative of what is going to happen, and I promise you more people are going to raise their hands and be like, oh, me too, and then it's going to have a ripple effect in your company because people are going to trust you and know that they can align with you because you're vulnerable enough to say the things that not everyone has the courage enough to do. All of that to say someone is waiting on you to show up to work today. That's what it boils down to. Um, one other thing I really want people to know is that y'all, this stuff, it does not happen overnight. So what we have to stop doing is we have to stop barking and we have to start working. Um, a, a friend in the online business world just reached out to me and said, hey, I think you would be a, um, a great online you know, business coach you know, in their business. And I said, oh, bless you, Saint. Thank you so much. But what you can do is never email me or call me about that again. Um, simply because there are too many barkers right now. Too many people saying, oh, this is hard. Oh, you told me my business was gonna get to six, seven figures in X amount of time. Bark, 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 bark. What I want to see are the receipts. What have you done? Have you woken up and had your live at 4.30 in the morning in the closet? Whatever that is for you now. I'm not telling everybody to go get in your closet and start doing lives at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not doing no live at 4.30 in the morning in my closet, okay? But what I am going to do is my version of that. What is that thing for me, right? You look at the leader in your, in your life right now and say, okay, what are the steps then that this person is taking and how can I align and make those things happen for me? One of the things that Julie has inspired me to do is cycling. I love physical, like I'm a dancer first, right? But Julie came to visit New York City and she was like, hey, we're going to Soul Cycle, and I was like, "You have lost your actual Lord Jesus brain cells if you think I am leaving my warm, beautiful, comfy bed to come and be up on somebody's bike at six a.m." And she was like, "Well, it's what we're doing, so uh, come, let's go." And I was like, "She's lost her mind, y'all." I went and got on that bike. First off, just real talk, you got to start somewhere, you got to show up. I don't know if anybody has ever been to Soul Cycle, but you know how like you're like riding the, the wheels? Well, any time that they would say go back, I thought that meant move the wheels back. So I'd be like, instead of doing like, instead of doing like the back tap, I was like back pedaling like the opposite way, if that makes any sense. And I nearly broke that Soul Cycle bike, but I want you to know that that day changed my life. There is like not a week that goes by that I don't go and move my body at Soul Cycle. Or last week I got the Peloton, right? All of that to say like, what is that thing going to be for you to show up? One, you gotta show up for yourself first because I know before she shows up to her live, she has her morning routine, right? Like before I came on this live, I had to go get my life right and like get my spirit together before I, try and share light with other people, right? So whatever that is for you, you you've got to figure that out for you. And here's the thing, maybe it's not a morning routine, maybe it's a night routine. I don't know what it is, but it's something that you're going to have to amber to more. I love your energy. You are just the most incredible student right now. She is like, mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so all of that to say, um, you figure out what works for you. For me, it's morning reading. 
And then it's some light exercising. You know, a lot of people are like, I go hard for an hour. I, I've learned with my body, my body doesn't like to go super, super hard in the morning. So I figure out, okay, a 20 to 30 minute exercise works better for me. And then I'll do a harder cycling class later. In the day. Like you figure out what works for you, but whatever it is, it's going to have to be something and it's going to have to be consistent. All right. Because what we have to stop doing is barking and we have to start working because I think a lot of us are wanting to see the results that your leader has had or, you know, an entrepreneur reached out to me about a month ago and said, um, Lord bless. And I say this with all humility in my heart and, and mind. Four years ago, I opened up an online academy. Another entrepreneur opened up an online academy a month ago and is upset that they do not have the numbers that we have. I want you to know, stop barking and start working, right? In the sense that, yes, it's only been open for four years, but I've tried to do the work of 10 years in four years, right? Not knowing that I was pedaling on a bike to prepare myself and my family for a pandemic, right? Um, so before you start to go to that negative, that negative space of I'm supposed to have X, Y, and Z, I need you to pull out your personal receipts of what have I done? What have I contributed? What have I put into my personal bank of self-development, my personal bank of laying into my community. You know, the first thing I always ask people, they're like, oh, sales are hard right now. Okay, when's the last time you've just added some free value in your community? Where's your weekly newsletter? Where's your ask me anything? Where's your wins Wednesday? Where, you, you know, and it's like, oh, I don't, well, you can't, yeah. It's like, you remember back in the day when like the, um, when the Kirby vacuum person would come and knock on your door and try and sell you a $9,000 vacuum that was supposed to help you lose weight and clean your home. And you were like, I don't know you. You've given me no value. I don't trust you, right? Now had Kirby man, you know, showed up and loved on me a little bit, brought me a cookie, told me everything was gonna be okay. Then when Kirby man brought out that $9,000 Kirby, I would have been like, you know what, if you give me a payment plan, I might be able to help you. Okay, so all of that to say, stop barking, start working, show up for your people, but it starts with showing up for yourself, okay? Um, the other thing that I know is Teamwork is teamwork, and I do believe there's no I in team, but it is 2020, and we need to get real about what are we contributing to our team, right? And I believe that it is multidimensional. What is the energy that I'm bringing to my team, right? What is um, the openness that I'm bringing to my team? Am I being a helper? right? Because I know that so many people on this team, and my team included, right? Like this is something that I'm talking to our team at the Broadway Collective, Collective about right now too, is like I have employees that have been with me for six months and I have employees that have been with me for four years, right? I am expecting those four-year people to come with an energy of helping, to come with an energy of openness, to bring that six-month employee up to the, to the level of having been here for two years already, although they've only been here, you know? So this is something that we can do in the Sparta Nation as well, right? In the sense that, I said this to my team actually in December, and I don't know if this, you know, kind of works in your industry as well, but we finished the year um, and we hit our revenue target. And it was very, very, very exciting. But it was exciting and it was disappointing at the same time. And I'll tell you why. Because did we hit the revenue target? Yes. But what I learned and what I knew in my heart of hearts was we didn't hit the revenue target. 
there were some players on the team that decided to show up to game day in Q4 and bat even when they didn't want to bat. Show up for their morning routine when they didn't want to show up. And those two, three of us, we got us over the edge in Q4. But who was at the holiday party drinking my champagne? Everybody. Okay? So I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. We can have a celebration, but I'm going to tell you what we're going to do the first week of January. We're going to have some real talk. And I sent out an email and I said, did we hit our target? Yes. But I know that we didn't hit our target because if we would have been doing what we had the opportunity be, to be doing, we would have exceeded our target, right? So all of that to say, again, I don't know if this works. I don't know, you know how metrics and things work in your company, but if there is a team mentality and there is something that we are all going after, we all have to bat consistently. And if you see someone falling and you see someone not hitting their, hitting their numbers, check on them. Check on your strong friend, check on your weak friend, pull each other up because the thing is we have to say what it is that we, what we have to say what we need to say, right? Especially in these times. I, again, I was talking about full frontal nudity earlier. It was the most exciting thing in the world to sit in. It was so uncomfortable, but it was so exciting because it changed the culture of our team when I sat down with those team members that I was like, you showed up, but you didn't show out, right? There's a difference. There's a difference. And don't be drinking the, sham the celebration champagne if you didn't break your back. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm not here to hurt no feelings today, but I'm just here to keep it real because we really do have to start looking at our person in the mirror and looking at the receipts because I think so much we live in a culture where it's like there's, there's the blame game and there's the, well, she said this and they did that. No, no, no. What did you do? What did you contribute? You know, my mom always used to say to us when we were growing up um, because I was not... I was not, I was a good student, but I was more so interested in my artistic endeavors. Like I was like, okay, let me go get this singing and this dance and this acting. Um, but she would say all the time, did you do your best? And that would be the most shameful, shadiest thing ever. Cause I'd be like, you know what, mom? <laughs> I actually didn't because we all know what our best is, right? And here's the thing. Some days a seven is just your best, but I'd rather you show up for that seven with every ounce of courage and, and might and fight, right? Like I had a couple of days this week where I literally said to the team, I was like, I am not fully here, but I am going to do my best best with what I have today. And I did. And there were days where I was at a six and there were days like where I was like, this is an eight and that's okay. It's okay. But what I had to do was like, be honest and tell them I'm going to do my best today. Right. Um, my dad is, <laughs> my dad is a, uh, is a athletic director. So I feel that, you know, Julie and I really understand each other in a, in a, uh, <laughs> in a really like, <clears throat> in a, in a good, better, best, never let it rest sort of way. Um, and I think that's why we get our students results, you know, at the Broadway Collective is because I don't pussyfoot around information with them and I hold them to what I call a standard. Um, you know, and yesterday, we did a live with um, a friend of mine in our, in our free Facebook group. And after we do a live, we always do an Insta post. Like we let the kids screen, you know, capture a grid post and then they, you know, fill in with emojis or whatever have, you know, have you. So that happens on the team. And then later in the day, I'm going onto our Insta story and looking at the, you know, the post from the kids. And 
I have, I, I think a lot, I'm artistic, so I think a lot of times in colors. And so I went code red. Like, it every, I just saw red. Like, I just, like, I, it, everything just, my world melted. Um, what happened is, and you may look at me and be like, Robert, you are a cuckoo person right now for losing it over this. But what I have learned about my code red is that when I do hit code red, I need to get off of Slack. And I need to go on the airplane mode. I need to go take a walk. And I need to get my, my constitution together before I talk to my team. So they did not see Code Red. But all that to say is there was this Insta post that someone on our team created. And our logo was completely crooked. And half of the co-host that we had that day that I was, you know, doing a sponsor for her company, half of her logo was like in the corner of this post. And her logo was also slightly over our logo as well. So it, it was a mess, right? Maybe to 80% of America, they would not notice. But I noticed because we have a standard, right? And so I said, you know, after I took my walk, because I had to take a walk, um, I said to them, I was like, you know, standards matter. Standards matter. And so we have to put our systems and our processes in place that this never happens again. Because little things like that, to me as a consumer, to me as a leader in this company, show that you don't care or that you're careless. If we're going to do a webinar and bring in a friend, I want to support and sponsor their brand with care that I would hope somebody would do for me and our company, right? So after they looked at it, they were like, okay, we see what you're saying, but I say all of that to say, I need you to be that vigilant over your stuff, okay? If something is crooked, it is your job to make it straight. And if somebody, if, if it's someone else's job to make it straight, you put systems in place that things happen and things get done because, we have to fight for the standard right now when so many people are honestly just fighting to get off of the couch, right? We have to be the change makers and we have to be the people that do things differently. It is our responsibility because if we are going to bring it back to the top of, you know, this talk, it's like, boo boo, you weren't given that breath for you today. It was for someone else, right? So I think, oh my God, Joy Chatter and I'm upset. Honey, she's just she's giving me the head bob. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. Also, Megan Culper, I want your hair and your glasses. You are my spirit animal. Um, and so I, I just, I want us to, I, I need us to fight in, in this time right now because I know that it, it, it's super, um, super easy to, to get back and be like, you know what? It Because honestly, I did have a choice yesterday. Do I bring this up with the team? Yes, you bring it up with the team, right? Um, the next thing I want to share with you, P.S., how are y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? Y'all good? Okay, good. Um, you don't get points for getting your toes wet, okay? You do not get points for getting your toes wet. Okay, again, we work in very different industries, but you know exactly what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. Taking that template that someone shared with you and changing one word and then sharing it with your community, it's getting your toes wet, okay? And I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> the reason that I went like this when I met Julie is because she's not a toes wet person. It's what I call all in energy. I asked my students all the time. I said, I need you to fully submerge with me. I need you to get, I, I will allow your toes to be wet when you see my Facebook ad. Cool. By time you get to my class, you better be knee deep. And by time I finish my 15 minute warm up. You better be, you bet, like that water better be a, a right under the bridge of your nose, okay? Just enough. Then I'm going to get you to dunk, and we're going to stay down, and then I'm going to let you come back up, okay? 
But this is the kind of training that we all have to do with ourselves as well, because I feel like right now we all want all in energy results, but you get in your toes wet. You just like, oh, I'm in the kiddie pool. Let me just. No, you got to go all in because right now all bets are off. Like it, it's a really honestly in the online space. It's so exciting. It's so exciting what is happening. We are reimagining possibilities. There are better days. There are, there are hard days. There are easy days. Like they, they fluctuate every day. Trust me, I'm right there with you. But what I do know is that the people that are going all in and dunking themselves in the water and encouraging other people to do the same, they are experiencing wins that they did not know were possible. And I say all of that to come back to the beginning when I say it's okay to have a good day. Y'all, it makes no sense to me on paper what is happening in our company right now. No sense. Like we should not be at Q4 numbers in May. Right? I'm here to let you know people are ready to do work. People are ready to do something different. People are ready to align with you. People are ready to try something new. People have, have means. I was just having this conversation with my mom last night. I said, you will find the shoe money when you find the shoe that you want. Right? You're like, okay, no. Um, they don't need to know about these shoes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out a way for a girlfriend to Venmo me twenty dollars and this. But like, you will find a way to get what it is that you want to get. And I'm here to let you know. And again, this is just an experience that I'm experiencing right now, but other friends in the online space too. That if you go all in and you truly show up with all of you, people will be like, "Who is that?" I want some of that. I want to do that. And you will see things happen, not only in your business, but in your life that you didn't think were possible. You know, something I've been saying, you know, and my mom has heard me say it a million times, you know, during this, this time is declaring over myself, I will have favor in a famine. I will have favor in a famine. I will have favor in a famine. And I will have favor in a famine. I said to the team, the day that I sent them, you know, we all work from my home here in New York City. There's six of us that are here every day. And the day that I sent them all, you know, they have their little desk back there. Um, the day that I sent them home with their desktops and New York City cabs, I said to them, I was like, this will be our key to our next level. I was like, I promise I will do everything in my power to show up for you for as long as we are quarantined, if you will show up for us. If you will, you know, and I gotta tell you, it, it, it's just been, it's been incredibly exhausting, but it's been incredibly rewarding what has happened. And not just from the business standpoint of things, but from the community, I have never received so many unsolicited thank you emails. I get packages at my doorstep almost every day from kids, not their parents, from kids making cookies, making little homemade crafts. I'm not asking, sometimes I do ask them, I'll be like, y'all, y'all know I love chocolate chip cookies. Y'all know I love a tape, send me a tape, um, you know? And so I'll give them, cause they're great. Cause kids do listen, um, if you train them right. Um, but all of that to say, um, people need a home right now, you know? And if you, if you wake up in the morning and you clean your living room up, and you open your door consistently, I promise that they will show up. I promise. Um, because at the end of the day, if not you, then who? And I just need you today to make up in your mind that you are going to finish strong. I need you to see, I, I emailed, um, not email, I text my pastor 
maybe about a month ago, and I said, I cannot tell you the image that go one of my favorite days of every single year is um, December 31st when I'm at watch night service. And I just have, it's the best cry that I have of every single year. It is, I'm like, ah! it's like snot, it's gross, but it's so joyous and so exciting. And I said to my pastor, I was like, I am so excited about this prayer on December 31st, 2020. Like I'm, like I'm, I'm looking forward to it, not in a get this year over way, not at all. My frame, my framework in my brain right now is I cannot re- wait to rejoice that I got through that and that I thrived and that I had favor in a famine and that when so many people were losing, I tried my best to still show up for them so that they could be found. Yeah? So... Make up in your mind how you want to feel on the 31st of December this year. Because I really want you to be putting a pat on your back of like, you did that, friend. You did that. Yeah? Thank you all so much for this. I'm so grateful to have shared a little bit of time with you. Are you even kidding me? Like, I can't even with you right now. Like, I almost had to go, and if you listen hard enough, Robert, you're going to hear Jesse singing in the basement, you know, as per usual, um, thanks to you. But I almost had to have someone go get me to, like, um, th- you are just everything. You just are. Thank y'all. Thank you y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Um, wait, Julie, are we at time? I went or I've got Holly that's coming on to, um, can we stand up? I know. I, did I tell you all ago you were going to church? I told I'm you. I'm so you sorry. To I was supposed to watch the time. I always do. So I'm like, I'm, all right, now I'm going to talk for five minutes. Five no, just, I, I know. Kendra just said that too when she was on here before. And do you see this beautiful synergy that we have with Kendra sharing that our stories are, are important and Robert sharing how you have to show up to tell your story. We've got this beautiful synergy happening. I took six pages of notes, which I knew that I would, and you filled my soul today, Robert, which I knew you'd do that too. So, I mean, what is, I mean, Kate, really, seriously, are you guys following him on Instagram? Right this second. Sometimes he says mean things about me when he gets on his Peloton, but. Oh know. yeah, because you're rude, because you make us do things that are really uncomfortable, and I don't like you all the time, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, truly, truly. If you have if you have a child who is thinking about musical theater in any way, get them in Robert's space. You know, I talked a little bit when we were out there last summer. Um, he had some of the parents just kind of talk about their experiences with the Academy. The Academy is phenomenal. And what he has Jesse do is phenomenal. But more importantly, who he has Jesse around that's the game changer. That's the game changer. I love you. I snuck somebody in. My mama, my mom, my mom was like, can I come watch you? Sleep? Yes, absolutely. Elizabeth. Yes, mama. Hello, Elizabeth. Yay, also, Elizabeth. As I leave, I just have to give a shout out to Brittany Moore Anderson right now because there is the incredible hope beside her right now. Like, <laughs> like popping in, like you are nailing it. Like all the moms <laughs> out there, like, all good. And like, can you even? So like, if I were trying to like get stuff done and I had the incredible hope beside me. I know. Y'all this are- This is life now. This is 2020, it. isn't it? Oh God. All right, I love you so much. Thank love you. Love you. You're Thank the best. Thank y'all. Bye.